video now on doing this time around should have been done a couple of weeks ago but I couldn't get around to doing it due to circumstances on the, out of my control. The video was made and ready to go up but I just couldn't get to finish the very end of it. And it's a group of wood turners, wood workers and woodies from all over Europe got together and decided to launch a video on the 16th of April. And it's the Woodworkers European Collaboration Bill for 2015. And each person was to pick something from their area or their country and make it and do a bit of a talk about it. Okay, so what I decided to pick isn't that famous, but it, it was back in its time very famous, and the stuff that goes inside it is famous for Ireland. <laughs> I can say that about it, but I'm not going to talk about that now. But uh, it involves barrel making and the work of coopers, who were great men back in the time, and there was great employment in Ireland back in this time. And I think there's only five guys, I think, left in Ireland that actually work in breweries, uh, repaired and are making some of these kegs and barrels, or whatever you call them. So what I'm going to do is, the video is made and I'm going to just do a little bit of a talk over of not what I'm doing, but what they did to make it. Because what I do is made on the lathe and what they did was with basically axes, planers and hand tools and there was a great skill involved in making these particular barrels. Okay, so over the lathe and you can see what I made. and. I'll talk about what they, how they done it, okay? The craft of Cupron involves the manufacture of wooden casks. Various hand tools were used with great skill to fasten wood staves, long thin cord, individual sections which were then fastened together with metal hoops forming different sizes of cast or wooden vessels such as pails and churns. Cuprin has been practiced for many centuries and still practiced in some parts of the world today. Those who make the casks are known as coopers. There are three main categories of coopers known as white, dry and wet. White cuprin involves the manufacture of pails, butter churns, tubs and other household utensils for daily use. Dry cuprin involves the manufacture of casts for holding dry goods such as flour, tobacco and vegetables. The wet cooper or tight cooper made casts for long term storage and transportation of liquids that could even be carried under pressure, such as beer. Wooden casts are frequently referred to as barrels, but the wood barrel actually refers to a specific size of cask. The sizes of cask include a Ferklin was an 8 gallon capacity cask, a Kirtland is a 16 gallon, a barrel was a 32, a hogshead was a 52, and a butt was a 104 gallon capacity. Back in the 1920s, about 500 coopers in Dublin, half the city's total worked the trade. These coopers were highly paid tradesmen, working in distilleries and breweries. At its peak in the late 1800s, there were 28 or more distilleries in Ireland and about 11,000 coopers building and repairing barrels by hand. Proceed of making a cask might involve the use of over 30 different types of tools, mostly used for cutting and parting the wood. 
Many stages were involved and a cure might have several casts on the go at once rather than following one through at a time. Casts were traditionally made using prime American white oak. The wood required seasoning or drying. The timber for making the staves were stacked in large piles under cover outside allowing for free passage of air between them and were left for a minimum of two years. A cooper force prepared the individual wooden staffs which jointed together to form the cast. It involved the use of a variety of sharp parting tools including axes, several different shapes, curved blades. Using these tools a cooper would first cut the staves roughly to size, then carefully hone it down to its exact size and slightly curved shape using a number of different knives. Then finally the staves were passed over a joiner, adding its angle so that they would join smoothly with one another. Staves then brought together to form a water tight seal. This proceed would repeat with each of the staves until there was enough to form a cask. The staves were then brought together in the next stage known as raising. Here staves were gathered and placed standing upright inside a metal hoop forming the cask. The cooper then fixed the staves roughly together by hammering the hoop down over the top end. The staves then had to be bent into the cask shape with a tapering end and a central outward bulge. To bend the staves a special machine known as a steam belt was used to shape. Like a large bell this machine would lower down over the staves and subject them to a high steam pressure which softens the wood. When the cast was removed from the steam bell the cooper would bring together the splayed ends using a rope and then quickly hammer down more temporary hoops over the staves forcing them to bend together into the curved cast shape. The cast was then placed over a pile of wood shavings which were set alight to char the inside of the cask, drying it out, setting the shape and sealing the wood from the inside. Casks ends were then prepared to, to receive their two lids, known as heads. Using more parting and cutting tools, the two top edges of the cask at either end were cut away into a bevel with the very top edge flattened to ensure the cask would stand steady. Then a groove was cut below the sloping edge with a cross where the head would fit. Now the cast was ready for its heads. Now finally the heads would be made and fit. To make their circular heads comprise of several individual planks slotted together, the cooper used a compass to measure the inside top of the cask end. Then he would cut out the right circle using a bow saw from a roughly shaped circular head he made. Once cut to shape, all the head surfaces were made smooth using a special shaping parting tool and the edges were beveled 
to fit into the tin groove inside the car scans. Now the two heads were slotted into the groove at either end of the cast, a piece of rush being placed on the inside of the groove forced to ensure a water tight seal. With both heads in place the cooper might make a final adjustment by smoothing down the surface again or would make a fresh set of hoops which were hammered down onto the place over the staves. Finally the heads of the cast were branded with individual identification numbers and the name was put on them and transported around Ireland and around the rest of the world for carrying whiskey, ale and beer. Okay then, there you go, there's the video, I hope you all enjoyed it. I'm going to put a link down below for all the other guys who took part and some guys couldn't take part and probably will later on. I'll put the link down below, you can have a look at what they made. I haven't even got through to looking at any, any of the videos myself, I'm being very tied up. But that's the little piece there now, it's a little small stand, there you go. And the little barrel so sits on it, it's a lovely little ornamental piece. And it actually works, you could actually put a um, drink into that now, and the tap works perfect. The little thing on the top, the bone, the whole other is made to work. I know it's only an ornament, but it does work. Okay, and I'd just like to thank everyone for subscribing to my channel because uh, I just can't believe the amount of subscribers since I've been away. I just constantly subscribing and subscribing and just can't get up. Like, if as long as people keep on subscribing and watching my videos, I'll keep putting them up. I'll do my best. And uh, thanks, you, thank you all again, and I'll see you all again soon. And give the video a thumbs up if you like it. See you all again the next time, okay? Bye now.